Welcome back. Now we get into some results. First thing to get out of the way is that this is the response from a, uh, a whole panel with a uh, passive response, i.e. it's not powered, the woofer is just passing through it and, uh, and what you get is uh, pretty much garbage. It's, it's uh, doing a strange uh, leveling off and then a step up to a flat response which uh, is uh, not very useful. It's uh, obviously a combination of the dampening of the uh, both sides of the panel as well as the fabric and uh, it's causing this to uh, step to occur and uh, it, it's no use. So uh, from here on we will disregard these particular uh, measurements. This is the panel mentioned previously with the low resonance at 42 hertz. It has a loose diaphragm. Uh, in blue you can see the uh, that the uh, active response is such, but you can also see that the mylar side is uh, also at around about the same 42 hertz. Thus the only two measurements worthwhile seeing here is the uh, the mylar side and the active response and they they both give 42 hertz which uh, it only shows it's loose. This is a early serial number beige panel which I bought uh, as a uh, spare uh, a year or so back. Uh, it, uh, it works quite well as you can see 61 hertz. So nothing wrong with this one. The first of four 1994 uh, panels and uh, it uh, is pretty much what I expect. 66 hertz for the powered resonance and 82 for uh, the uh, single half side mile side. Wobbliness of the uh, blue uh, response might partly be due to the loose stator as these ones do. This one is an exercise in futility. Uh, the diaphragm is only half hanging on, uh, but interesting to see it nonetheless. The third of four of my panels from 94 Resonance peaks are as expected, but the uh, blue response, of course, is a bit wobbly. Likewise, it has uh, loose status. The fourth of four from 1994 has uh, similar uh, peaks. This other Q series panel has much higher resonances, and I believe it's due to the uh, number of holes that are in it. It's, uh, it's quite uh, perforated. Well, this one is a late model panel from my 2912. I can't trust it because uh, it uh, seems to have very high resonances and I suspect that's due to the fact that the, the, uh, there's a big hole in the diaphragm as well as being shrunk uh, by the heat. It was quite a fire when it all happened. The following five graphs I I sort of trust. They're mostly from uh, new panels and uh, all the results seem to be uh, quite believable. So uh, thank goodness. So once I got all these resonances, uh, what do I do with them? Well, I decided to go all technical and, uh, and try and work out some standard deviations. And this is what I came up with. I won't go into all the functions I used in Excel, but, uh, but basically I, I got the series of resonances. Uh, from there, you uh, get the, uh, the probability distribution number and from that 
you can get the uh, the standard deviation. Uh, you also calculate the average. So with standard de standard deviation, the mean, and uh, the probability distribution, and your frequencies sorted in order, uh, with those things you can get a graph, and uh, the graphs are down below. The uh, top one is the active frequency response of all of them. The middle one is the the mylar side passive response for all of them, and the bottom one is the the back side of the, a single half side panel. Uh, the thing you can see is that uh, the resonances in general uh, higher f from the mylar side and uh, the uh, the actual active resonance is the lowest and that makes sense because you have uh, more more uh, impedance with the the actual stators in the way so it's to be expected the the least resistance which would give you the highest frequency is just a single half side with the the, the mylar being uh, directed towards a microphone and uh, the the thing about it is that they seem to be uh, and typically uh, from uh, resonance of the active to the mylar it's uh, 10 to 15 hertz difference which is uh, yeah quite a bit I will ignore the the bottom graph, the uh, the side from the the back side of the uh, stator. It's uh, pointless uh, worrying about that one because uh, it's not really where I intend to uh, measure these resonances. Uh, I'll always be measuring directly to the uh, mylar itself or simply the uh, the active res resonance. So. That's what I'll be doing. But um, it's nice to know where it lies in the scheme of things. And uh, it's, uh, what, 5 hertz below the uh, mylar resonance and uh, about uh, 12 hertz above the the, uh, the true resonance of the active dr driven panel. This page is about the Q series. There's only three, unfortunately, uh, so it's not much of a distribution, but uh, nonetheless, it gives an idea. Uh, these are typically from uh, 1994. Also note uh, that some of these graphs, I've actually removed some of the numbers if they were just so far off. Uh, because it, it uh, disrupts the distribution. You really do need to ensure that uh, each number is valid. So if I had a, a loose diaphragm or a, a shrunk diaphragm, I, I didn't count it in the, uh, in the uh, tally. It, it would have just skewed the results far too much. Final graph is of all the late model panels and uh, Fortunately, uh, we get a reasonably good uh, result there to give 69 hertz. The, the other two uh, only have three points, so they're not quite as valid. But nonetheless, they show the trend uh, similar to the other graphs. And now the final conclusion. It would appear as though, if you look at the numbers here, that uh, there are similarities between uh, the older Q panels and uh, the overall panels and the and the new panels. So, uh, so looking at them, I decided that uh, what I would aim for is uh, a powered panel of 68 hertz and the uh, mylar side resonance of 83 hertz, a difference of 15 hertz. So, so when I'm stretching the mylar, I'll be aiming for 83 to 85 hertz. And that way I should end up with uh, a powered resonance of around about 70 hertz. So when in situ, 
um, in in the actual uh, driver in, in in the speaker enclosure. So uh, yeah, I think that will do me. The next step is to check my weights on each of these panels to, to see how it correlates with these numbers. Um, the, the real aim is to uh, know what weight to put on to say it's going to be of that particular resonance and uh, it'll be interesting. So that's the next video. See how the weights compare with uh, the actual resonances. Okie dokie. That's all for now. Goodbye.